Are you ready or what? I'm ready, man. Hold on. Three, two, hold on, hold on. one. Action. Yeah. <laughs> it's time. It's time. Man, uh, um, I start usually start these things off with just one, just giving you thanks for taking the time out of your day to sit with me and do something that really is no benefit to you, more just pleasure to me, you know? Mm. Thank you for being part of my pleasure. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I think it's uh, very beneficial, you know what I mean? Uh, putting, a, putting a face to the... Uh, the business, to the, business, the yeah. community, and, yeah. and what it is that's brought a lot of people together. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to sit down with you and have this conversation and kind of just get a um, more so like a backstory of how this thing has become what it is. Right. Um, and also put it, like you said, put a face behind it. So if you don't mind, um, anybody that's watching this or most people that are watching this know who I am. So I'll spare that. But <laughs> go ahead and just let me know uh, who you are and kind of what it is, what you do. Yeah. Um... My name is Diego. I'm, uh, I just turned 28 and, uh, you know, born and raised here in Houston, Texas. Uh, hmm. What do you do? I'm the owner of Divine Shine. Um, what, what is Divine Shine? Divine Shine is a four bay self wash uh, where we also offer detailing and uh, we host the best block parties. <laughs> I will attest Fully. to that. <laughs> they are um, from the very beginning when I came to the first one to one of the most recent ones that you had here. I was just impressed at the level. One, I was excited to see that it seemed like as they got bigger and the last one, you were a little less stressed. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. at the beginning, the pressure of hosting a house party and wanting to make sure everybody was yeah. good. And you know, like we did in high school, hosting house parties, making sure everybody's clean, nobody tears the place up, yeah. cops aren't being called, all this. I could, I could almost sense the, just, I could feel the, you know what I'm saying, the, the less stress that you had on you. So man, um, let's, let's, I, cause I, to kind of stick in line with kind of what we were, what I wanted to do without veering too much off track, I kind of put together this little list and I kind of sent you just some kind of brief points that I wanted to cover. Um, you said you were born in Houston, Texas. Did you grow up on the east end of town? No, no, no. I'm a little further east, east side, um, over in the North Shore area. Okay. Graduated North Shore, class of 2014. Okay. And then um, what was childhood like for you? I mean, were both parents involved? Um, you know, was it, you know, Silver Spoon? Was, was mm. it something <laughs> just kind of like you had enough and everything else was just up to you to kind of get, get into, you know? No, uh, my childhood wasn't bad. Um, and we definitely did not have money. Um, but I come from a very loving mother and uh, kind of a cold father, but in a good way, you know, like he kind of kept me on my toes, kept me hungry, kept me ambitious. Um, and kind of in a good way too, he always made me feel like I just wasn't doing enough. You know what I mean? Like there's always something to do. Um, so yeah, shout out to them. <laughs> Man, um, and then, what was it what was it something that like obviously i don't know for you but i'm assuming i say obviously but i'm assuming that uh, uh when i was a kid uh, there was other things i wanted to do and i kind of ended up here um was divine shine or something in this field kind of what you wanted to do as a kid or how did you kind of stumble into this um man that's a, that's that's a great question um i always knew i wanted to do my own thing never knew what I wanted to do. Just like many people, you know, um, you know, they always say you got to find like your, your, your passion or your drive and all that. But that wasn't exactly my, my, um, my angle of how I went about it. Uh, growing up, probably from like the age of 11, uh, I always swore I was going to end up in the, mili in the military, specifically the Marines. Um, it took me up until I finished high school to realize that that wasn't really something I wanted to do anymore. And uh, I went to college for a little bit studied different uh, career paths. None that really stuck. Uh, the one that did stick probably the most was uh, studying safety. So like uh, industrial health, safety, uh, OSHA codes. Uh, so I did that for a while, but um, you know, 2020 came around and, and it was 2020 was either made you or, or broke, you, yeah. broke you really. Uh, and it just seemed like a good time and opportunity to to pick up on something new or to just add more value to my life. Um, I came to the realization of how much I valued my time. Cause you know, 2020, you, uh, you, you just had so much downtime, you know, you weren't really working. You couldn't go to the store. You couldn't go to the gym. You couldn't really do it. So you spend a lot of time with yourself. Um, but definitely 
2020 was whenever I said, okay, you know, like, uh, I want to add value to my life. I, I saw how much, I saw how much little time I had, or no, I'm sorry. I saw how much I valued my time and how much more I've wanted it to myself. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and I saw just how much I kind of dreaded going to work or, uh, just started thinking about all the things I could have been doing while I was clocked into this person, you know, under this person's, uh, jurisdiction or whatever right but um yeah uh i thought i was going to be in the military and uh right at 2020 was whenever i kind of like uh tapped into the whole wanting to better help you know better better um self-development pretty yeah. much uh, i tapped in heavy on that so i want to say a lot of 2020 i did a lot of like reflecting picked up on some books podcasts and uh started making small improvements to my life uh, 2021 was definitely the one where I said, okay, you know, like I, I want to start, I want to start a business. Um, it started off as a power washing business. And, uh, that's the funny thing, you know, I was, uh, I've been power washing for accidentally all my life. You know, my dad always, he has this funny had, I mean, he has this funny hobby of, uh, he would get machines off of offer up, bring them home. He knew they were kind of fucked up. So he would fix them and flip them. Oh, smart. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, at one point we had, I want to say about like, Shit, right now he probably has about fifteen power washers in his in his garage, just kind of chilling there. Um, and I'm really heavy on that. How like everybody has one thing, one opportunity that they could potentially capitalize on. You know, that doesn't mean that it's going to be your million dollar move, but it means that you know it, it might be your thousand dollar move. Yeah. And then that one will get you to your ten thousand dollar move. Yeah. And then you know you scale upwards. Um, so I started power washing and uh, detailing in 2020, 2021. Uh, and I just kind of saw that the power washing wasn't going to be exactly my million dollar move. Um, but towards the end of 2021 was when uh, I was driving. Okay, so that's the funny. That's really funny. Um, I was hanging out at one of my favorite bars, end of 2021. And uh, I would always come down Canal Street at night, specifically because of Shayla's. Uh, Shayla's has this pink strip that they turn on at night. And it just gives this on the deck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just gives this like street, you know, this nice little. If you haven't aesthetic. checked it out, they've got some good ass coffee, man. They got good coffee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I would always come down the street because, like, it just gave this street like a nice little aesthetic, and I like, I enjoyed driving by it. But uh, one night specifically, I drove by, and there's this uh, for sale sign on this car wash, and you know, for the longest, it was just like, you know, all of us, so many of us, just drive or dro just drove down this, by this place, never really paid much attention to it because it was just this shitty looking corner um but dude I, I like saw it and I like went crazy I pulled in I pulled in I can't remember which bay I pulled into but I put into one of these bays got like on Zillow on Google and I was just like trying to see the numbers uh after seeing the numbers I knew that it was pretty out of my uh my range you know like through my job power washing detailing and like, none of that was enough of this um but uh instead of getting discouraged I uh I went I went balls to the wall, man. Like, next day I called my friend who was a realtor and I was like, how much do you think I could get from my house? And he goes, what are you trying to do? I said, I think I'm trying to buy this car wash. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, why? And I go, I don't know, man. Like, it just feels right, you know? Uh, and that's pretty much what I did. Like, almost on, I want to say three weeks later, the house was sold. Uh, three weeks after that, I was moved out. Um, and it's been a, it's been, it's been some move since, man. Like it's. So wait, wait, wait. You sold your house? Yeah. For this? Dude, and you know what, man? Like, if I've learned some things, man, because uh, I ran no inspections on this place. Do like, you regret it? Oh man, I don't regret it at all. Yeah. Uh, Could you've done it better? Hundred and ten percent. No, no. You know what? No, and I will say this. Um, I feel like coming across a car wash that's for sale is already kind of a tough thing to do. Uh, and this specific one was never going to be for sale again. You know what I mean? Like, I just saw how the, this whole neighborhood was growing as a whole. And uh, I wanted to grow with it. You know what I mean? Like, I already knew a couple of people in the community. I knew business owners uh, here in the community. And I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to be a part of that. Um, but yeah, dude, no. I, I bought this fucking place. Like, didn't even take a, look at, take a look at the inside at all. So sure enough, the day that I'm here meeting with the uh, old property manager, uh, he opens up this fucking pump room and oh my, it was trash, man. It was, it was, it was, it was like it needed just like to pull out the guts and put new Completely ones in Completely rebuild oh, bro. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. operations. So it was, uh, it was definitely, so I had, I got, I gathered enough money to uh, 
purchased the place, I did not have the money to reinvest into the place. Yeah. Because uh, I thought I was just going to come in here, turn on the fucking switch. And, and let it run. Bam, bam, bam. Money, 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 money. Um, I remember, like, telling one of my closest friends my how I saw it projecting and, like, that I was going to be done playing, paying this place in, like, three years. <laughs> not at all, dude. Not at all. You didn't account for maintenance, no, repairs, not all, all that stuff. Nothing, man. Nothing. <clears throat> but I just was... Uh, I was so, I had tunnel vision on it. I just, I had this little vision for it, you know what I mean? And I saw, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. Um, and here we are still working towards that, that, that goal, I guess you could say. Man, what, um, <clears throat> what does divine shine mean to you? What does divine shine mean to me? Um, from a business, from the location, from all aspects, like if you were, if you were blind, if you went blind right now, and I told you divine shine, what would you, what would that like those that word those words collectively mean to you? Divine shine. Well, look, both of those those words just go together perfectly. You know what I mean? Like, so let's look at it for what it really means, right? Divine shine. You know, like obviously something is just shining, beaming in the most godly way possible, right? Um, but I view it it's in two different ways, and I've actually never been asked this. Um, but one. Yes, uh, something shiny, something that just has like this immediate sparkle. And that is, you know, one, we do that here with the cars when we detail them. Um, but at the same time, I feel like God does shed a lot of light on this place, man. Like, um, it's been nothing but blessings. Or, <laughs> you know what, no matter what it's been, it's been a blessing in, yeah, in some overall. way or form, bro. And uh, I've learned so much from it, and and uh, I feel incredibly blessed to be in this place. Um, and to not even just be in this place, man. Like owning the place is kind of it still feels strange to say that or when someone introduces me that way uh it just it doesn't feel real sometimes you know so god's definitely been on my side throughout this entire process um that's i, I guess that's the best answer i can give you yeah man uh um from from what oh my cheap my cheap gas station glasses <laughs> um so you're 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 doing this you're getting this business going you buy it off the jump and you're like this kid in a candy store with tunnel vision right. that gets starts getting hit with all the additional costs that you yes. know first time people are doing this right um, at what point did you decide to, or let me ask you this um, did you have a mentor or anybody that was kind of like holding your hand through this process and kind of pushing you along the way maybe someone that's been in the business or has done something similar or are you just kind of just winging this stuff yourself? Uh, it's a lot of winging, a lot of winging, a lot of YouTube, and a lot of Google, yeah. Re Reddit threads. Yeah. Um, the closest thing I had to a mentor were, it was really two people. Um, one of them would be the previous owner. I never once met the previous owner, but uh, I kept getting a bunch of no's, like uh, from the bank, from, the, from his realtor, because obviously the realtor would have to ask him what he thought about the deal, and the, you know, he'd always come back and be like, hey, he said no. Uh, so I got a lot, shit ton of no's. Um, but whenever I sent in my final offer, I let the realtor know, like, hey, this is, like, this is all I got, dude. Like, I can't do anything more than this. Can you let him know that? And if he says no still, could, all I ask is, is a phone call. And uh, his name's Jerry. And, uh, well, Jerry's the owner. But the, uh, the realtor's name was uh, Eric, I think. I can't remember the realtor's name. But uh, Eric calls me back and he goes, hey, I just want to let you know that uh, Jerry said no. But uh, he's on the line, so go ahead. And uh, pretty much went in for like a good three to five minutes about who I was, how old I was, my vision, where I want to be in life, and these goals that I had for myself. Um, I sold myself to the guy. And uh, he asked me, he goes, uh, I want you to send me a screenshot of your bank account like right now. I want to believe you that you're saying that you're going fully in on this. And uh, I do. And uh, we're literally on the phone as this is all going on. and. Uh, he goes, look, you know what, man, I'll take it. But then he got very real with me. It almost felt a little dark. But he goes, look, man, you have to do everything you're saying you're going to do. Because if you don't do all that, he goes, you're going to fail. He goes, I'm going to find you and I'm going to kill you. No. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's a numbers guy. Like, I, I picked that up from him. Like, he, this, he's this guy, knows, he's, he's an investor is what yeah. he is, man. And uh, he really had no value for this place. He came up on this place because somebody lost it in a divorce, like, many, many years ago. Uh, so he didn't really give a it's shit like about petty, this place. It's like petty shit for him. Just right. to, like, all right. Yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah. But uh, he mentored me on at least how to get through the financial part of it, how to make it look good on paper for a bank to, you know, be like, you know what? Yes, this is a profitable business and so on. 
So that was one mentor. The only other one that I had really besides that was uh, this guy named Jose. And I met him the day that I got the keys for the place and the old property manager just said, hey, this is Jose, he's, uh, he's our maintenance guy. Me and him shook hands and he spoke to me in Spanish. I spoke to him in perf my, well, perfect Spanish, really, my best Spanish. And uh, he loved that. Immediately we clicked. He was like, no, 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 tu eres hispano. You know, like, yeah. I want to help you out. Yeah. I want to see you succeed. And uh, he was very, he's very real with me. He's like, this is fuck, this is fuck, this is fuck. You don't need this and this and this. Um, but he's kept it 100 with me fully. You know, I, I, I have yet to feel like this man has ever stole even a penny from me, man. You still do business with him now? Very little, because, you know, you, you, you kind of learn as you go. Yeah. There's little things that I don't have to call him for anymore. Yeah. You know, like, you start kind of getting savvy with the machines and the self-wash. Because, dude, they're, you know what? Million dollar business idea. Uh, nobody makes self-wash anything. You know, like nobody has like a like a YouTube channel on how to fix that, how to fix this, how to fix that. Nobody, nobody. So and um, there's there's only like threads. So you have to go on Google and like see threads from other business owners, car wash owners, and like they'll share like for example their coin machine, their Intel on that, or car credit card swipers, whatever it is. Like I was looking for like a deck for like the entire vacuum side, and uh, now I know where to go. You know what I mean? Uh, but that's it, man. That's that's the closest thing I got to mentoring. Man, that might just be you might have just came up on your next business idea. Like, right, a YouTube uh, channel. Yeah, yeah like like. Yeah. Or even just a series on a part of a YouTube channel, like, hey, you know, first generation YouTube, you know, car wash business or mm -hmm. whatever, right? What not to do, what yeah. to do, and how to, what to avoid, what to look for Definitely type of stuff, not. you know? Um, man, so if you could redo it all again with all that you know now, what are some of the things that you would have done going into it? And then obviously, um, not like assuming that you purchased it, right? Mm. Um, what are some of the things that you would have done prior to purchasing it? And then what are some of the things that you would have done from the beginning to kind of be proactive instead of retroactive, you know? Right. Um, I wouldn't have bought this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, well, right off the rip, uh, I feel like if someone was to be like, hey, you know, there's this car wash for sale over here. I feel like I could do it all over again. Almost blindfolded. You, you don't know? have a house to sell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I got this car wash hey, to sell. I'll sell mine. <laughs> Let's do it I'll again, go, man. Go partner up. <laughs> bro, Divine Shine too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I feel like I could do it all over again and easy. You know what I mean? Like, I know who to call now. I know how to do this, how to do that. The city, fuck the city. Like, I've learned how to deal with them. They were one of my... I never once even considered them being an enemy, <laughs> but uh, they were, they, we've thrown hands, you yeah. know, meet the city and I, uh, yeah. But, um, so that would be, first thing I would do is probably run inspections, you yeah. know what I mean? Like at least know exactly what it is that, what I'm gonna be spending on, one, building the place up to what I need it to be. Because, kind of like how we were talking about earlier, businesses are about money, about making money. And uh, that wasn't really my goal with this one, you know what I mean? Like I just wanted to acquire the goddamn place. All I ever cared for was the, getting the car wash to kind of just pay its its note. You know what I mean? Like as as long as it comes, it gets enough money for the for the one the note and two the fucking city when they come by. Um, I'm good, man. Like I don't need to like become a millionaire off of this. Um, and I'm, the beauty of it is that I'm meeting just so many goddamn people. It's it, that's the best part of this all. Um, but definitely run inspections. Whew. I don't know, and I wouldn't try to save money. You know what I mean? Like, whenever I was first building the place up, I thought about nickel and diming a lot of things. You know, like, I could save a little money here. If I, if I go this route, I could save a little money here. Nah, man. Just spend the, spend the money right Put the first it right time. Back in, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, please. It's, it's an investment at the end of the day. Um, and I feel like every time I took the cheap route, I got slapped in the face. Um, but those are these things you learn as you go. You know what I mean? Uh, Sometimes I feel like I was living when I sold that house. It, I, I think I went, I think I went three weeks between selling the house and uh, acquiring this property. Best three weeks of my life, bro. Uh, I was like living, living. But uh, I feel like as soon as I signed off on this place, God personally came down and humbled me, like beat my ass to humble, yeah. humble groundings. You know what I mean? And. Uh, I've just learned so much since. You know, just keep your head up, keep your head up, because you got to go through the you got to go through the motions. There's, some shit is just inevitable. You got to go through it. I had this conversation with a, a good friend 
Uh, I'll name drop. I had a conversation with Ernie yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and man, and we were on the phone for almost three hours. Um, I, I, I share a lot of personal information with Ernie simply because of the fact that I, uh, because Ernie shares a lot of personal information with me. And we were having a conversation and I won't really disclose much of the details just for out of respect for Ernie. Um, but we were talking about um, kind of how life, I use this analogy, you know when you go to the hospital and you see that heart monitor? Yeah. And you have the beginning reading and you have the end reading of the heart monitor. And the way I look at it is I look at it like the beginning is birth, the end is death. And the flat line is the humble factor, you know, the baseline for yeah. life. And as that heartbeat drops, excuse me, that's that delicious coffee. <laughs> um, as that heartbeat, the little little kid in the car looking at us look, in the backseat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, he's like, uh, yeah, there's a camera. Yeah. We're inspiring uh, the youth out here. He's bro. like that weak-ass YouTube shadow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was talking to Ernie and I was explaining to him a little bit of like, you know, man, I think what, you, what, we, we, what we have to feel to appreciate both sides of it is, you know, that baseline, but then also when we drop in the lows of life, whether yeah. it be depression, loneliness, sadness, stress, um, just stuck in the routine and the motion of things, you know, you have to feel that in order to appreciate, yeah. you know, the highs. And if you have an understanding that both are temporary, when the goods are goods, that they're not always going to be good and they're good right now and enjoy the ride, you know, then you also learn to respect the lows because you know, the lows are also temporary and the lows are also something that won't last forever. Mm. And choosing to highlight more on the higher side for me has been more beneficial. Like, you know, what things bring me joy? What things bring me peace? What do I want to do with my time? What are the re relationships I want to continue to build? And what are the ones that don't really serve me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I think having that roller coaster of life with lows and highs, and if you understand both sides of it, and again, you know, all good things go, all bad things go. And if you just have a baseline and you appreciate them both, like in order to feel really good, you have to feel really bad. Yeah. I think you yeah. have to appreciate it. And it's just, that's just the, what I was kind of telling to him and talking to him about. And it's funny you say that. Cause I think it, it, it's like you said, like at the end of the day, it's a blessing, you know, and all of the lessons, all of the stress, all of the, you know, successful things that you've done outside of the lessons or the hiccups that you might've had that you've overcame. I think they're all just that little high of joy, like, oh, I did it, and yeah. what's next, you know? And then another low, like, it's just part of life, man, and it's part of, like, what we go through as humans. And as long as you just continue to push forward in either one, I think we'll just continue to, you know, just keep pushing through, man. Yeah, that's um, with that. At what point did the East End block parties become something <laughs> that you wanted to do? And, and how did the first one um, come together? Oh, man. Oh, man. Hmm. Well, when I'm I was about just to go. A, when yeah. I was just a wee lad. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, uh, that could go a lot of different ways, man. Uh, so I, I'll try my best to kind of keep it in order. Um, hmm. All right. So, uh, like I said, the day that I got the keys, I met the old property manager. And uh, I got his phone number just in case, you know. You never know. And I'm glad I did because for the first month or two, I was calling him a good amount. But... Do you ever get tired of you? Probably. You know what? That guy was a really good guy. You know, a lot of patience. Man, I'll tell you something yeah. that a lot of people don't realize, and I'm learning this, is the people that we see as, like, successful that are doing kind of what we want to do or better than where we're at, right, in a sense of, like, that yeah. goal, right? Oh, they want to bring you up. Man. They want to bring you up. Yeah. And, like, they're, yeah. they're almost looking for people to be eager and excited about yeah. something because they know what it felt like yeah. most of the time and yeah. they were once that person. Yeah. So I think they almost want to give you a hand Dude. and say, hey, you show me your bank account and show me your real yeah, yeah, and yeah. I will gladly show you. For sure, you know, man. For sure. That. And I think, I think that's a lot of it, dude. I'm yeah, going to move man. this camera dude, around because I, uh, I think we're starting to get some of that sun. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, you want to change you're this good. No, you're good bit? right there. Yeah, yeah you're good right there. Um, yeah, how did the East End Block Party things kind of become something? Like, and how, you know? Yeah. When was that idea get started from it? 
Yeah. Because um, I imagine, imagine you were stressing out trying to get this place up and going, <laughs> yeah. and then you said, oh, you know what would be really fun? To add more stress to myself. Dude, you know? and you know what's funny, too? Let's, let's talk about that really quick. You, when I met you, was literally in the beginning of it. Like, I remember, I remember... Uh, We've been running, bro. We haven't, we haven't ran since. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> but Eduardo had just hit that wall, and I remember you parked in that bay, and I think the, the wall was still white. But that's how long ago I met you, you know what I mean? So you've kind of seen me go through these fucking motions, and it's crazy. Like I love it, dude. I, I, I like I. Although it's not something uh, my 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 forte yeah. or right off the rip, because I'm trying to do my thing. Yeah. But I do love the fact that I would ultimately love to get something like this too. You yeah. know? Oh, dude. And yeah. to watch it grow and to watch it's fucking inspiring yeah. and it's motivating to me, which is why I reached out to kind of have mm -hmm. this conversation. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, well, look, I'll try to, I, I'll try to put as much detail in, in a short span, I guess. But uh, man, this bitch is kind of long. But anyway, I'm the day that I met the property manager here for the key, um, kept his phone number, and one day, you know, like this place already had graffiti on it. They weren't really murals like this. They were just, you know, people's tags. Um, but I reached out one day and asked him, "Hey, do you know any of the artists that hit these walls?" And he goes, yeah, you know, the, the main guy that I will talk to is uh, Carlos Empire. And uh, he gave me his phone number. Reached out to him and I just told him, hey man, you know, uh, I'm the new owner of this property and I, I know you've spray painted here before. And I just kind of would like to meet you, see about potentially working together and getting some new pieces up. So we came out and, uh, you know, we met and it was beautiful because uh, I was telling him my idea about how I wanted to get all the walls redone by a different artists, the whole new set, pretty much like new owner, new artist, new, new everything. Um, and he just kind of looked like, I don't want to say he didn't believe it, but like, I, it, I felt like he had heard this before probably. And he was just like, whatever, dude. But he was definitely down to work. Uh, so, you know, he started off with some of these walls and as he was here, I would spend time with him, uh, probably crack open a couple of beers while he was here. And uh, one day he started opening up about how him and his homies would come here in the middle of the night and uh, spray paint this place, uh, sometimes illegally in the past. And uh, that's what's that's the beauty of it, because if you go down Eastwood, you see the Ham, which is the Harrisburg Art Museum. And uh, I remember going back there like in 2017. And that's kind of whenever I got that little that little kick or like that little obsession for graffiti or like what it even looked like for a whole building to be just spray painted. Uh, so shout out to them. Uh, but yeah, he told me about that and about how him and his friends would come up here in the middle of the night and and pretty much just have like their own little thing. Kind of kept that in the back of my mind. Um, about six months later, you know, now car wash is all filled with different artists here. Um, and that's around the time where I already met you. Two of the artists that hit the fourth bay reached out to me and they just said, would you mind if we redo our walls? And I go, well, look, I can't really afford it because I paid everybody for the first walls. And... Uh, I go, I can't really afford that right now. Um, but you know, like I'm down to work something out. And he goes, no, 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 like we'll, we'll pay for the material and uh, you know, just come kick it with us. Uh, so we got a little of those little uh, old Smokies. Yeah. The grill, the parrilla. And uh, I want to say it was about, it was them two, a little keg and about 12 of us. And we shut down half of the car wash. Cause it, put some bars up right here like little seats and uh between the 12 of us we had a little party man uh you had a couple of people on skateboards right here on on eastwood we got the the grill started up they started spraying they had this little keg and uh vito uh vito's a tattoo artist but vito pulled up in this real nice whip parked it right up front and that was when i started kind of seeing it you know like nice car people were spray painting their skateboards there's beer like we were having a cool little party and people would pull up and just kind of like, what the fuck's like, going on over yeah, there? Yeah. yeah. Or they, you know, there's a lot of foot traffic. That's something that I love about this neighborhood. There's foot traffic here, cyclists. And they would walk by, run by, cycle by, and just kind of be like, and they wouldn't even ask. Like they just pull over and put their bikes up and just sit there and start watching these people paint. You know, like we were, they were getting a stage, you know, it was cool because they were, they were the main attraction. Um, but that day, I remember George and Primo were actually here all coincidentally. And, uh, you know, that was when we kind of first saw that little potential. Anyway, uh, a few days later, uh, Primo just said, uh, hey, remember that idea you had about like wanting to kind of have everybody show up at the same time and do the, redo the walls? He goes, I think we should do that. Um, so between us two and then uh, we got George involved too, 
we kind of kept pushing it back. We we're like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do this, but we never really once ever kicked that off. Um, definitely seeing that though inspired all of us. Uh, just knowing the potential that it, that it had. Uh, and I want to say fast forward about four months later and we hosted the first East End block party. Uh, we all had separate jobs. Uh, George took care of the vending side, like pretty much who was going to be a vendor here. Uh, Primo took care of more of the artist side, so he collected who was going to hit these walls and the fence. And uh, I kind of pulled permits, did all the talking, talked to the neighbors, uh, made sure everything was in order. Uh, sure enough, we hosted our first event, and it was on a Sunday, man. So I remember people were saying, why the hell would you do it on a Sunday? And I go, oh, why do you care? You know, show up or don't. Yeah. Um, and it was a great turnout. Like, uh, you, you, you came to that one, and uh, I couldn't believe it myself. I remember being in the mix of it all and, and just kind of looking around and being like, oh, fuck. holy shit, yeah. what are we doing right now? Um, seeing us stop the fucking street, which we're not supposed to do, uh, but nobody... Everybody was under control, man. Everybody was cool, relaxed. Nobody, nobody, nobody got ugly. Nobody did nothing. You know, like we all showed up peacefully, had a great time, and everybody left peacefully in one piece. Um, but after seeing the first one, you know, we knew that there was going to be another one. The original plan was, hey, we're going to do this yearly. But uh, nah, man. Surprisingly, the artists were the ones that were like, no, no, no. Like we want to do this kind of sooner than a year from now. Uh, and now, I don't want to say too much, but now, like, next year, next year's game plan is kind of crazy. And I can't believe the shit that we're going to try to do, honestly, next year. But, uh... you set up a stage right here in bro, the Bro, don't, don't, don't play with me, bro. I just might, you know, have less out here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we'll put them like they do in L.A. on top of the roof. Like, Dude. just, like, making, it, making a video. Hey, no bullshit. So we're getting rid of this canopy, and I was thinking about possibly putting, like, a bus and then making that a stage. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> on top of a bus. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, we have some, we, ha I have, we overall have great ideas and I feel like we're only getting more backed up by the right people. And by the right people, I mean associations in the neighborhood or even possibly the city of Houston. You know, where everything we're doing is, is, is great. It's for the community, man. Yeah. And uh, it's, bringing out, it's bringing out this neighborhood specifically. Like for example, I feel like a lot of this side of town tries to cater towards the uh the newcomers you know like hey why don't you come on out and um you know let's like, let's put you all together so y'all can mingle and shit you know what i mean but they never really want to cater to the original part of this neighborhood and that's what this event does man like it brings out this neighborhood the real people that were already here the locals uh, that are here dude, the They've locals been here forever not the people that just <sighs> moved here and and into these new townhome type things or yeah. whatever you know and yeah and i'm I get it. Life has to continue yeah. moving and doing its own thing. But but that's one of the things that I fear. And almost sometimes I feel like a phony because I enjoy this part and I kind of rep it a little bit. But man, I don't live here and I didn't grow up here. I will say one of the things that I do remember as a child is going down to uh, Memos, the record store. Yeah. And the Raspa place across the street. Okay. We would go there with my dad from Pasadena. And I remember going down 225 where it ends and you end up on that little underneath tunnel, whatever yeah. it's called, navigation. Yeah. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Man, and we ended up just, we would come over here. And I remember as a kid, like dropping my grandma off at yeah. the bus station down the road. And I remember those things. So like, that's the only thing that like, I would say I have a little bit of credit yeah. to this area and connection with this area mm -hmm. was because we would come to that record store right, right, and we right. would, we would buy raspas and nachos and shit like that. So, but I, I, same thing too. And now listening to your story about selling your house, like, man, I kind of, I kind of want to sell your house. I thought about <laughs> it to keep pushing what I want to yeah, do, dude, you yeah, know, and, yeah. and, and if it's, if it's a little setback to be able to kind of relocate over here and be part of this community and yeah. be more involved, like these are the people I want to work with. These For are sure. the people that I want to learn yeah. from. These are the yeah. people that I want to help get to the next level, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, don't get me wrong. Like I love where I'm at and I'm doing all this. And, but I've realized like kind of the thing that I want to surround myself with yeah. and the people that I want to surround myself, yeah. man. And, and so, man, one of the things I wanted to ask you is um, from the beginning, what was some of the pushback you were getting from the city and the community, if you got some from the community, if? Um, well, shit, let's start with the city. <laughs> uh, the city, I came in here and, you know, like, I, th I thought I was going to conquer the world. Um, I mean, you've conquered the blog party. I mean, hey, I, man, I think we could say that. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> part of it, man. But, for example, all I was trying to do was better the place. Um, but they started, permit this, permit that. You shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have done that. 
Um, it's like a money grab with these Yeah, and you know man. what? This crazy is like, I try to come at it correctly about everything. You know, like I wanted to have pretty much everything out on the on the, on the the table. And that's where I kind of learned like, for example, you don't tell a cop too much. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the yeah. same thing I've learned to do with the city. You know, like yeah. there's shit they got to know and there's shit that maybe it's best if they just yeah. figure it out on their own, you know? Um, but yeah, a lot of the improvements that I originally wanted to do, um, they either turned them down or they tried to charge me a shit ton for. It's a tax, man. I made that yeah. little reel about it, and unfortunately, that's what that's just yeah. what what life is. And you know, I called it a uh, I called it a luxury tax because kind of what it is is anytime you want to add some sort of luxury to your life, um, whether it be from a physical standpoint, you got to give up the junk food, the alcohol, and all that. You know, yeah. from a mental standpoint, you got to find peace and separate yourself from certain things. From a financial standpoint, you got to cut out some of that fun to you know prolong your money and you yeah. know things like that. Like. And even from a business perspective, anytime you want to elevate your life and grow your business, unfortunately, there's a tax with that. And yeah. Uncle Sam wants his cut. Yeah. And, and yeah. there's no way around it. Yeah. And no. that's why I did the stupid little reel where I was like, yeah. bam, you know what I'm saying? Because you get screwed at the end. But yeah. if those are your problems, yeah. then yeah. fuck it. Those at the are end the of the problems. day, it's best like, to just give him his cut. You yeah. know, like, here, shut up. You're not, yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. work Leave harder. You know? Well, you know, you pay Uncle Sam and then you also pay his, his cousin, which yeah. is the, the state. Yeah. You know, so motherfucker, or I guess the city. But uh yeah that was kind of the pushback with them uh wanting to they just kept coming at me and you know what the, the good thing is that like i'm not saying play this card by any means but it was really my first business you know what i mean i didn't know a goddamn thing like if they want to make it that hard on you they should really make you take a fucking course before you're eligible to pay f for yeah. business you know what i mean like if they're if it's that serious yeah. um but some city workers weren't too bad some of them were pretty uh under, they understood or they would kind of see like in a good way my ignorance to all this and say okay you know like let me they had at least kind of push me in the right way obviously i'd get to the next guy and it'd be another fucking brick wall but that was that uh the community uh i got a little pushback from the community at first uh i feel like i feel like there was a lot of or not a lot but i feel like there was certain individuals that kind of made it a little difficult for me to uh just kind of be a part of the community, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like at first I was kind of the new guy. And uh, like you said, not being from here, uh, from this neighborhood, kind of is, is a factor too. Um, what they don't know is that literally this is the first neighborhood that my mom moved into when she got here from Mexico. So, bam. But, uh, you know, I, don't, I shouldn't have to like just walk around with a shirt that says that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, I'm just, I'm just another guy. Like, I still have a fucking job, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not making hella money off of this. Uh, I still have a job that I work. I work, still work my 40 hours. Um, but just a tiny pushback, nothing crazy. I feel like now, for example, there was some people kind of saw it as in like, I was just like the, another investor guy coming in to kind of, you know, gentrify this neighborhood or start taxing this and that. Uh, I remember some guy commented on one of my, one of my first posts. Uh, I think it was whenever they broke in and uh, he goes, uh, that's what the fuck you get for coming from California and and raising that dollar car wash to two dollars I'm not even from fucking California I don't know where the fuck he got that from who hurt but, you bro but yeah but exactly yeah, who from California yeah, who hurt, hurt you, you? <laughs> but uh you know it was it was just like that's why that's why I like putting a face to the business you know what I mean like I am I am this 28 year old Hispanic firstborn here you know what I mean like uh, there's nothing there's nothing about me that says like, "Hey, I'm here to like take over the block" or yeah. anything like that. I just want to, like I, I said, I just, just, just want to be a part of yeah. it. Yeah, that's I it. Want, yeah, I want to get and I want to give someone. You want to add flavor to the community, dude. You want to add, and I think, man, and that's why, like, to see to see this thing go from like the first one, you know, mm. to see that, to see the traction you're getting as of recently, and just to see the consistent like support that you're getting from the community, and not only that, dude, but like the involvement of what you do with from the vendors mm -hmm. to, you know, the, the coffee shop next door, you know, to yeah. um, now I've, I've noticed the last one you had sponsors for the yeah. event, you know, and yeah. then the artists to give them the, the, to give them the opportunity to really share their story. So like, yeah. it's one thing putting the art on the wall and then us seeing it and making our own, you know, uh, opinion of it or putting our own meaning behind it. But then when you, when you share the story of the artist as to why someone did 
the Mater truck. Oh, uh, bro. Yeah. Like that one was like, I think that was the first one you did, right? That uh, was the second, second one. Yeah, one. I dropped two in the, in the, okay. the first two I dropped on the That's same day. That's the one that I saw. Yeah. It might have been the one that resonated with me the most because I could sense the emotion in that guy, you know, and, and I forget his name, but. Dude, Emilio, genuine guy, bro. Yeah, you know, yeah. and like, and, 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 and just hearing him talk and hearing like almost like the feeling in his voice yeah. and his tone was, and kind of almost seeing it like, like, Who's cutting onions? Yeah, that's what it was, you know? <laughs> and like, man, hearing that and like, it, it stopped me in what I was doing. And like, that's the one particular, yesterday he went back and I guess he saw like the comments and stuff yeah. and he liked it and he like, man, much love, dude, this and that yeah. or whatever. But like, once I saw that and I felt that, yeah. I was like, holy shit, dude. Like, I love where this is going. Dude. And like, hey. I love where this is going. Like, man, I really genuinely do like, yeah. And, and that's why I wanted to sit down and have this conversation with you because I, I, you're someone that I admire for taking the leap and doing what you're doing. You're someone that I admire for taking the risk and, and not having it all figured out. And, and it gives me joy and it reassures me that my crazy idea isn't so crazy. Nah, man, nah. And you can have these fucking wild dreams and chase these crazy visions and still be a regular guy. Yeah. You don't have to be that California guy that hurts no. people, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, no, you don't have to be some rich investor. Yeah. <laughs> but like you said, man, yeah, no, that the the artist part of this, um, hey man, at the end of the day, I'm really, really my entire goal with these artists is to give them a stage, man, because uh, they're incredible. They're they incredible are, and there's just so many of them. And uh, it's like, this guy's yeah. good at this, this guy's good at that, this yeah. guy's good at this, this guy's good at that. Yeah. So, when, so when they like, kind of like, Look at the dog, dude. Like the dog, like that's the goodest boy I've ever seen on the fence, bro. <laughs> um, and like, yeah. just like, I mean like this, to see this come together and yeah. become something, you know, like all of them, dude, like something as simple as like that, like mm -hmm. it, it's not too detailed, but it speaks, Yeah. you know, it's got volume, it's mm -hmm. got like, it's dense, yeah. you know, and it's simple, but I mean, I couldn't do this, dude. Like yeah. I could, I couldn't AI generate the good that these guys can't even trace it yeah dude, I, mean? I couldn't yeah. trace it even if you had if you, if you had me man um how did you referring to the last one that you did was that always the plan to take it to that magnitude or are you just kind of pushing the, the steps further and further and further and just kind of just you have a sense of direction yeah without yeah. you know a hard plan yeah yeah, I do actually. Um, how did vendors get involved? <laughs> how do they or how did they? How did they? Easy. Um, Slid in the DMs, be like, no, hey, no, daddy, no. I, I kind I of like uh, that car. <laughs> 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 nah, man. Uh, if anything, the goal, the first goal was uh, we only asked people from this neighborhood to to vend. So uh, they were mostly East and Second Ward vendors. So we, we want to start off with the inside and then eventually invite everybody else out. You know what I mean? But like we said earlier, we want to keep it, people from this neighborhood, we want to see them meet. Uh, one, of the, one of our earlier meets, or, or no, it was, this was actually a car meet. Bro, my neighbor is un taquero. Like, it's a family full of taqueros, and they came over here. You see what I'm saying? Like, I want to see my neighbors eat. Like, I want to see us eat first. And then, for, so for example, for the first one, it was East End people specifically, and then we're starting to kind of expand and let other people come in. Because at the end of the day, like I said, we just want to see everybody eat. Um, so that's how vendors got involved. Uh, that was all you asked, right? Yeah, but how'd you take it from like the local level of vendors oh. to now kind of, I see like, so, like I the saw, sponsors. I saw some pretty big name sponsors. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Know? Um, man, that's, uh, whew. look, man, uh, I saw the, I saw what we did with the first one and seeing the pictures, seeing the pictures is kind of like, really what what what's what keeps me going like like in the pictures for example there's this one picture i have it was one of my favorite pictures and it's these two little girls in pajamas what the fuck does that mean that means that the neighborhood came out you yeah. know what i mean like it's it, we and uh i forgot who asked them i think the photographer asked them like uh where are you guys coming from and they said no we're literally down the street like we just wanted to see what's going on over here you see and 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 the more the more we lock in actual dates like for example i want to keep doing it in april and november but if people know that they're gonna be like nah i Whenever this comes around, like I'm there. It's a community I mean? event. Yeah. It's like a parade. It's like Mardi yes. Gras. It's like the yes. Lone Star Rally. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just one of those things that has been always, it's always been here. Yeah. It's been, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I saw the potential in it. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I see where I want to take it. 
So um, the only way to kind of upgrade that is taking yourself at a more serious level. Uh, so what I did was uh, I put together a PowerPoint and uh, I really just sent it out blindly. Like literally like I just fucking let that bitch rip all around. And uh, I saw that some people did were willing to sponsor it. And like they weren't even hitting me back for like the smaller ones. They were like, no, 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 no. Like I want that platinum package. I'm yeah. Like, Damn. Um, what, after you get one, you get the second one, and really after two, it's just like, Everybody oh, they're doing it? Yeah. 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 So r this time we locked it in at four, um, but already, like, immediately the next day, like, somebody else wanted to be a part of it, and somebody else wanted to be a part of it. Or they're like, why didn't you hit us up? You know, but now I know, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm sorry, with that, with those packages, man, uh, I'm only going to polish that up a little bit more this January, and that is... Like I said, I don't want to say too much, but with that package and showing what it is, like pretty much putting it on paper, what it is, who we are, what it is that we do, and how does this benefit the neighborhood and everyone around us, um, that's only going to help us grow more and get more permits and get more help and being backed by the right people. Like I said, it being the East End District and the city of Houston, because the, the few times that cops have pulled up on us, they kind of look around and they're like, fuck, you know, like. I remember for the lowrider meet when they came, they came in deep. They came in like seven deep. I don't know if you remember that, but they go, man, I love saying this story, man. It's like one of those like, oh, moments. And uh, I see the I'm siren. Made it. <laughs> <laughs> I see the siren going off, and I go, you know, I, I, I want to, I want to approach that already. I want to get in front of it. So I go, hey, officer, what's going on? He goes, uh, is this your event? I go, yeah. I go, all right. Well, look, I need you to clear the street and empty that car wash. And I go, okay, you know, I can, I can clear the street, but why do you need me to clear that car wash? And he kind of snaps and he goes, because you can't just take over someone's car wash, dude. I was like, you're right, let me talk to the owner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on? <laughs> no, nah, man, so uh, without getting smart with him, and I go, uh, <clears throat> but I am the owner. And the second cop in the car goes, Oh, <laughs> uh, he goes, damn. And they just kind of look at each other like, fuck. Uh, so they go, well, Sergeant's pulling up. You know, we got to talk to him, so and so. So Sarge took like 10 minutes, uh, pulled up. And in those 10 minutes, all the cops are already out of their cars. Sirens were off, though. And they're literally just walking around, taking pictures, not only of the vehicles, but with the vehicles themselves. You yeah. know what I mean? Sergeant guy here was like, why would somebody call us for this? I go, it's probably had to do with the Metro, you know, I'm sorry yeah. about that. There was cyclists, but yada, yada. And he just like really took it all in. He goes, this is beautiful. Um, one of the cops even told me, he goes, I don't know if you've noticed, but like everyone is so calm and cool here and everyone's brown. He goes like, you guys are just kind of like showing what it is that we can do in a peaceful place. And I really stuck with me, man, fuck. Like I remember that, that, that felt really good, but Anyway, I've always worried about that too, man, because it's like, I, and, and, and I, I worry it from a sense because like I've just kind of been molded to think like that. We're like, we get together and then it's just like mass shooting. You got to watch out, you know, you got to like, man. like, yeah. and then like you yeah. come here and it's just like, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be Hispanic, brown, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Cause I brought one of my friends, Jay, and uh, he's a black dude from um, Alabama. And he came, I was like, man, what are you doing this weekend? Like, man, come with me, dude. Like, and he's usually on the road driving, working, you know? Mm -hmm. But he actually, I got, I got to bring him out with me. <clears throat> man, and even him, he left, like, high yeah. from, like, I just damn, experienced dude, that. like, yeah. and, like, he even put, like, he made reels and yeah. this and stuff and put some online, and he doesn't normally do that. Yeah. But he was like, bro, my shit on TikTok was blowing up, dude. Yeah, like, sick, man. And, like, man, he was like, man, let me know when the next one is. Yeah. Like, I want to I come to it or whatever. Yeah. And I've been, I'm going to try to get him out. So it's obviously as long as the schedule's aligned, but mm -hmm. even for him to come out and get that like, damn, and he was like, damn, I, I want a car like this, and mm -hmm. bro, like this is cool, like yeah. the food was good, the vibes yeah. were cool, and like, again, this is a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood, but you don't have to be Hispanic no, to dude, come no. enjoy this stuff. Like, it's for everybody, man, and, and, and I personally would love to see other races and other cultures come in and experience kind of what we are and what it is that we do, and as a community and as a group of, uh, I guess, Hispanic people, mm -hmm. you know, and what, mm -hmm. what, it, what it is that this culture is and yeah. what, what we're sort of trying to preserve here, you know? Right. Um, right. So that's cool, dude. That's, 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 I, I, I enjoy it, man. And I love to see the continuous growth and growth and growth. And I just, you know, I watch, you know, I get involved when I can and I've got the time to do it or whatever, but I just sit back and I just watch and I'm just like, this motherfucker. <laughs> like, like, the stuff Bro, this dude's doing. I man. know, man. It's absurd, but it's, it's nice to scale upwards. Man, 
closing off um closing off this year right because you know the new year's right around the corner um at the current state of this business um is this what you had in mind when you got into it um have you surpassed the expectations that you set for yourself and then also what are some of the things that you're going to do without giving too much away going into 2024 so from the very beginning the first question was uh <clears throat> is this what you kind of envisioned um yes and no in the community route yes fully because I don't know if you've ever noticed how like they'll have meats at other car washes, mm -hmm. bigger car washes, and it's usually like a bunch of slabs or any car can meet can really happen but at a car wash. But never at this magnitude. Never. never. In this four bay. Yeah. It's in a four bay, in bro. A four yeah. Bay spot, like. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, so I kind of saw that coming, you know, because this is tech. It's private property, yeah, but it's also public. Because I don't have a fence up or anything like that, which is why I consider this to be an outdoor gallery, a public outdoor gallery. Because people come, take their pictures, I don't run them off. But um, yeah, as far as the community side of it, I wanted it to get to this. Like I wanted people, I wanted, I wanted to shake hands with my neighbors and you know, like show like, hey, I am. Well, it's, you know, you don't always want to say you're the owner. Sometimes I like saying I'm the manager or something like yeah, that. Yeah, because then people come pick a bone with you. Well, yeah, not yeah. even just that. Just like, you say you're the owner or something, people immediately think you have money or something yeah. and. Yeah, that's that's like, not the case. Bro, I sold my house. <laughs> I live right here. I have here. no home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, man, uh, the community side of it, like I said, I, I see, I saw how there was car meets and stuff like that. So I always saw that. I always felt like this was going to be like a meeting point for people or, or a shared space for people to come. And really, what what is their common, what is their common uh, factor is cars. And now it's cars and art. Um, as far as the business side of things, I did have a different, completely different goal with the business side of it being i thought i was gonna have like double digits and employees and like just kind of for example have this bitch running at all times it's kind of gotten to the point where i don't really want employees anymore i uh i get a lot of pride in in having that personal connection with my with my client um and like 2024 where, where there's gonna be a detail garage you know what i mean like i'm gonna be out of the way because i detail here like in the open space, uh, but through the grace of God, I, uh, I'm building a garage literally right next door. And uh, I'll be doing my detailing there. And I plan on kind of being like a, not a one man team, but like me and a couple helpers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just kind of sticking it out here. Have, because I'm, I'm appointment based only and I really like that. I love kind of building my schedule to where I want it to be and, and the freedom because at the end of the day remember like the whole reason i got into this was because i saw how much i valued my time and how much more i wanted of that and uh i'm gonna stand by that man i like i like where it's going what is um a must do for you uh, on a personal level and then for divine shine in 2024 like what is something that you're not taking no for an answer like the business drive, side or anything in, in general give me one for business give me one for personal What's that tunnel vision thing like getting the car wash? Like you weren't gonna take no for an answer. What's one of that you have for yourself and then what's one you have for the business? Um, Cause I'm gonna hold you accountable and be like, motherfucker, <laughs> you remember last year when I talked to you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's December 2024, you got two weeks left. <laughs> no, for sure, man. Um, on the business side of things, uh, well, I guess in two different ways. Um, I'm gonna re, well not rebuild, but there is uh, renovations coming. And uh, I want to give this car wash finally, not everything, but a majority of what it is that we need here. For like example, like the, lip injections and Botox. <laughs> dog, that'd be crazy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just get the coin machine work because that coin machine has been giving me trouble all along. So I'm getting a new one of those in. But you know, just like re really, just these renovations, get a third vacuum in here. Um, pretty much give the self wash everything that it needs. So that's on the business side. Uh, let's let's talk about the East End block party side get that fully um sponsored under a art association and i feel like that's what that packet's gonna do for me i can see that going very well though on a personal level um you know i, I feel like uh i've grown a lot in the last uh few weeks specifically in the last few weeks and uh i think i'm just gonna be a little nicer to myself uh there's there's no real goal you know what i mean like there's not like this this like finish line I'm trying to hit. I'm just trying to kind of uh, take in everything around me. Cause I've 
through pictures, and it's sad that I have to do, I, I did it through pictures so much, man, like, I see these pictures and I'm like, wow, I should have enjoyed that moment a little bit more. Um, and, I'm, and I'm locked in on that. Like, I just want to practice my presence everywhere that I'm at and just be fully there, man, taking it, taking it all in because our experiences is kind of all we get to keep. I'm going to tell you something and you can, I'm going to say something and I want you to tell me if I'm wrong or not. But I remember when you first put this thing on, on a smaller scale, I could feel you stressed out. Oh, yeah. When yeah. I saw the last one and I could actually like finally see you just like, you were like standing there, like just like giggling, like, <laughs> like just like, just kind of like just chilling. You even had time, like normally like, I would come up like to the first one or two or whatever. And you're like, hey, what's up, man? And then like, boom, you're like doing something, you know? <laughs> yeah. And like the one time that you, you know, the last time you were here, I, I think I actually like was the first time that we said what's up. And I was like, dude, like good shit. And you're just like, yeah, like you're just like standing over here. You're just like, thanks. Like enjoying it, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> and, it, 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 and I think, I don't know. I don't know what you've done. And I'm just assuming from me judging on the outside, um, I feel like now the la the second last one you did, I feel like you've kind of got the structure down a little bit mm -hmm. where I don't know if you're delegating to the right people. I don't know if you're putting things in the right hands or pawning them off to other people to have other responsibilities where you can be in the moment. Yeah. I felt like you were in the moment yeah. the last one. A little bit more, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I guess what's changed is, uh, I don't have kids, right? But uh, I hear that the firstborn is always the hardest. You know, like you learn so much through it. Um, and after that first one, it definitely set me up for the second one. Like I kind of knew things I wanted to attack a little bit better. And I'm also pretty, pretty big on like writing shit down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like these, this is what I noticed throughout this night and this is what I wouldn't work on. Um, but yeah, I was definitely less stressed. Um, I purposely wanted to get somebody to run the traffic control. Um, my guys were good. Those were some of my helpers here, but uh, I think next time I, I just want two cops because like, I had a cop here last time and him, even having his presence kind of made me feel even like, you know, this is all going to be okay. So next time I definitely want to get two cops to kind of do the traffic control and then maybe just like a couple other guys. But yeah, like you said, it's like a whole delegating type thing, you know, like I need to have them do that because if I'm doing it, I'm, I'm immediately stressed. I'm moving around, I'm running around, moving and grooving the entire time. And, uh, Pretty much with the. Um, it shit. was their key. Yeah. You're good, yeah, dude. Do your yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a real operation we got here. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I had my it's the, had the key in my pocket. So yeah. Like I was like, how the hell did he leave? Yeah, I know. It's double keys. Yeah. Okay. All right, man. Thank you. <laughs> Take it easy. That's a clean ride. <laughs> uh. Man, but I saw the my bad man. Uh, I saw the importance in uh, showing face and shaking hands, man. Like uh, you, you really gotta kind of like shake these hands. You know what I mean? Let them know who, this is who we are. This is who I am. You know, this is what we're doing here. Um, and it lets them know, you know, like, oh, I know that guy over there. You know well, it's mean? also a familiar thing because people, we as humans, we kind of lean to things that are familiar to us, you yeah. know. And it's a little bit more opening and comforting when when you approach something from a familiar standpoint right. and to see someone from a familiar resemblance, almost in a sense of like, this guy looks like us, yeah. grew up like us, yeah. you know, he's like us, like, damn, and he's putting this on like, holy shit, like, what could I do, you know, yeah. like, like, what could I take my dreams and my shit, Man, my shit to? Man, uh, there's something that one of the, one of the kids that helped, when, he's not a kid, 17, but uh, something that he said, man, and he goes to the same high school I went to, uh, cause I bring him from that side of town over here. And as he was speaking of me to somebody else, he goes, uh, he goes, just a young Brown kid, uh, straight out the East side like us. And I go, damn, that's you know, a like, cool thing. I was like, man, that feels good. Cause like in a way you are, like I said, my really one of my biggest goals is inspiring the youth, man. Um, long term, I think one of my goals is to, uh, you know, get this all locked in, be financially stable, but coach people on how to get from point a to point b to point c because jerry i never fucking met jerry but this dude put me on he put me on some game and and with the with even him sharing what was it like a five minute conversation the knowledge that i gained from him in five minutes if that put me at a you know in in some way or form towards this path bro like i, I want to continue to do that for other people you know imagine if i gave someone 10 minutes 20 minutes um and not only just inspiring the youth i love what it's done for my circle around me I feel like, well, my circle's smaller now, but 
they all know uh, exactly who to talk to. For example, they come to me whenever they have questions about getting an LLC. And so many of these things just sound so like, how the fuck do I do that? And it's so many things that are just like, literally it's a two-step process, you know what I mean? Just gotta kind of put the time towards doing it. But they just sound so scary to us. And I wonder, it just, it's yeah. just, it's hard because we don't have that. What's normal to some cultures mm -hmm. is not normal to us. What's normal yeah. to some families is not normal to us. Yeah. What's a common practice in some um, cultures, it's not common practice for us, you know? And, and I think doing what you're doing and us pushing barriers and pushing the limits and taking that crazy route and that crazy road, all that does is just me putting this stuff out there and having these conversations with someone like you that's that's gotten that far um, just in what you're doing right now, man, those, although it may not seem like a lot to you or it may seem like a lot to you, it is a huge step as far as where we've come from and the dynamic that we Definitely. grew up in and Definitely. now what we're doing, you know, and, 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 and to be able to do that and then take that and turn around and pass the baton yeah. or pass the flame, the torch down to somebody coming up behind me and it's yeah. like, hey, dude, I'm gonna give you this free game and I want you to take it that mm -hmm. much further. Definitely. You push past that, yeah. you know? No, nah, that and something that kind of used to rub me the wrong way was, uh, well, it still kind of does, but my mother or my parents were just so like, no, 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 you should go to school first and learn business and learn how to do this and do that before you take this leap. And I go, nah, fuck that. Because at the end of the day, you're just kind of learning how to run somebody else's business. You know what I mean? You know, but it's hard because they always, they just want to see the best in you and they want to make sure you're safe. So that comes from a loving standpoint. And sometimes I think what people need to be saying, even me as a friend, is just like, man, does this make you happy? And yeah, I agree with that. But at the same time, man, it comes with being Hispanic and being in this country. I think you know you're right I mean? too. Yeah. Like they're, they're just so scared of everything. Like everything, everything. Like I remember growing up, we were just so afraid of anything, like being put over by a police officer from something as simple as that. You know, we shouldn't have to be afraid when a fucking pol police officer pulls us over. Um, but that's what I'm saying. Like we just kind of grow up into like this, this scared mentality of like, no, 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 I can't do that. And the only reason we feel that way is because we don't know anybody that's done that before us or anyone on a personal level like that. Um, That's why I think it's huge and it's important for us yeah. to do these things, keep pushing, but also having these conversations and hey, maybe next year we can meet and see like, hey dude, what are you learning from a business perspective? The car wash idea you were talking about, about making a YouTube video or a channel yeah. of like, mm -hmm. you know, car wash 101, self wash 101 and, and putting that information out there. One dude, how to videos live forever. Yeah. So if you wanted to look at it from a form of like, Revenue, you could probably get to the point to where you could get some revenue off right. of that, right? But not only that, it's like, what if you had that resource whenever you needed it? Right. Dude, that's, Isn't I needed that? that. Like, I yeah. needed that bad. Man, uh, um, I won't, we won't keep pushing this thing a little bit, you know, too much further, but um, I wanted to ask you something, and, and I wanted you to take this moment and kind of end it off as this is, um, what's one thing you wanted to let, um, everyone know that has given you support and has kind of been with you in this journey. If you could, if you could sum it up into words from the artists to the vendors or just one particular individual or a group of people that you just want to just take this moment to just, you know, it's, it may be the last day you see them, you know, Oof. like mm. what would you, what would you share or, to the community and then, then to those particular people or groups of people or the city of Houston? <laughs> Uh, I guess this message goes out to everybody um, from, yes, like vendors and people in the community, but also to my inner circle of friends and family that have helped me through this. Um, dude, I wouldn't be here without y'all. Uh, at the end of the day, it always looks like it's just me and me and me. Um, but if you look at the Divine Shine page, I, I always try to say a we thing because I have the best support system through my mother, my aunt, my close friends. Yes, they're very supportive, but you know, they, they, they built that foundation for me to where like, it didn't matter to me if anyone else believed in me, but they got me to that point. And then now luckily, I feel like I'm back through everyone. Uh, some days I feel invincible, truly. Just knowing that I'm backed by such a great community like this. I don't wanna say city of Houston. Because uh, it's not the entire city, and I don't need the entire city. My community is everything that I've ever wanted, honestly. So, thank you guys. One last thing, and this is just my own personal question that I'm throwing in here. 
How the hell did you start getting involved with all these like music videos and <laughs> events that you've got going on here? Um, how does that happen? Is it is it is, is it people reaching out to you? Is it people? Uh, is it you offering the plays? No. Is it the momentum that you're getting from the community that's kind of speaking? You it's know, the uh, it's definitely the momentum, man. Um, the two uh, the the music because we've done one music video and. Uh, that promo shoot for Hat Club and Mexican OT. But uh, both of those, they, those people reached out to me and I, it was, I didn't even know how to like price point that. I didn't know how to like really go about it. All I knew was that I was down, you know what I mean? Um, so it's definitely through the momentum, but uh, I feel like I was also bringing it right back to the community. I feel like I've just been backed by all the right people. You know what I mean? Like having, having their support and showing how often they're here and the trust that they have with me is kind of what started that, right? But it's also uh, obviously thanks to the artists. The artists make this place 1,000% 1, 1, better. And uh, one of my favorite things is like how much pride a lot of people in this neighborhood take from that. You know what I mean? Like uh, I've received a couple of DMs that say, uh, you know, what you're doing for the community is amazing. Or like how good they feel. For example, like this neighbor might be like, dude, they shot a fucking Mexican OT shoot over here. You know what I mean? Or like they shoot music videos there. Or Les is always hanging out there. You know what I mean? And, and, and right now it's those people. And we've only been, I've only been operating for a year and a half. So just imagine like who is going to end up coming to these events? You know what I mean? Uh, Mayor fucking Houston might be here next time. Or Slim Thug, who knows? Um, anyway, those people, that, that's not exactly my goal is what I'm saying. I'm saying it just kind of came with it. And uh, I love that I haven't had to reach out to people like, hey, come shoot a music video. If anything, the only person I want to shoot a music video with here is probably less. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like, oh, you know what? I'm probably going to talk too much. But, yeah, don't uh, say that. Don't ruin anything you yeah, got yeah, going yeah, or you're yeah. working on or whatever. Yeah. But, but man, um, let's wrap this thing up. Let's go visit this little import shop that just opened. Oh, dude, yeah, man. Um, I think we should check that out. Thanks for, thanks for sitting with me, man. Um, I, one, I love where it's going mm -hmm. um i love how much growth you've had um in the events and then just over time i love to see the support that you're getting i love to see just the sponsors just everything i love that you're involving some of my close friends that i've grown up with for a while like steven roxy yeah. um you know ernie um mario um just and not knowing any of these people yeah like, you know and that's what's yeah, crazy to yeah. see to see people that i grew up with like me and mario went to high school and i used to work out in mario's parents garage in like just the cheesy little set you yeah, know yeah. and then that's another individual i want to sit down and have a conversation with because yeah. i admire him for what he's doing with his gym and the business yeah. venture that he's taking on ernie mm -hmm. for jumping and becoming his own independent artist and, and being this designer that creates these badass images and being yeah. part of your stuff. I used to work yeah. with Ernie at Discount Tire. You know, that we go back, dude. And then yeah. me me and Steve through Ernie, like, man, me and Steve have done some funny, just crazy stuff, man. And 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 it's cool to see people connect that I would have never imagined connected, right. you know? And it's For cool sure. to see the community of mom involvement and just it's just I love what you're doing and that's one of the reasons why I one, always support when I can, I show up when I can, um, and I just wanted to have this conversation with you to put a face and put a story behind who it is that you are and yeah. what divine shine is for you for the community and for us that just admire what it is that you're doing so again thank you man mm -hmm. thank you for sitting with me and uh let's go check out the show oh, man thank you for taking the time to get into know man i feel like uh if you have these questions other people have these questions and uh i'm just a nosy motherfucker bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah man uh like i said i feel like the what i do gain from this is you know, just the community knowing who it is that is putting this place together. And like I said, not for all the bad reasons, really. It's just to be more involved and, and, and they know exactly who it is um, that they can kind of, if there's ever an issue here, you know what I mean? Like, I like when people call me and they're like, hey, I've noticed this or this. This place is accidentally starting to get taken care of by the community. Yeah. Like, like, I watched the camera the other day. I was just watching the camera. It was a little bit of mess over here. Somebody came and just fucking picked that up and threw it away, bro. It's like, that felt good. So, wow, this guy, not only does he care about this place, but like, he's, he, well, not only does he spend money here, but he cares about the place enough to like pick up someone else's trash. Um, but still, 
Well, it just comes back full circle. When you pour into something, hopefully things pour back into you yeah. and they're seeing what kind of a staple this is becoming and where it's going. So they're like, hey man, don't touch that. That's a community spot. You know, right. that's, that's right. our spot. That's uh, our local joint, you know? Yeah, and yeah. and man, I think where you're going and I think I, I can't wait to see where you're moving in the, in the direction, you know, or where you're going to go in, in 2024, man. Uh, and like I said, I, I will gladly um, always come down here and support when I can. And hopefully I can get my ass in this neighborhood and be part of this, nah, this, please, this man. thing, dude. Please, I'm please. Gonna, I'm going to go sell my house. Like, <laughs> call my realtor. You know what, realtors? <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Let's Appreciate go, man. You. Let's wrap this up, dude. Thank <laughs> you, man. Yeah, I'm going to go... Uh...